All right, y'all. Uh, this is Brutal Podcast, our How at the Moon series where we talk to artists. Uh, today we have John Sinfield of Memorist, which is a UK band. Uh, they have so many singles out right now and more coming, so we can't wait to talk about that. But to get things started, we got to crack open some beers. You know what this is. This is Brutal. That means we got to drink. Yeah. Uh, so before we get cracking, hold on, uh, let's introduce uh-huh. everyone and what we have here for our beverages. Uh, John, won't you start us off as the guest? We'll let you go first with what you got. Yeah, sure. So um, I brought a, uh, it, was a, it was a Siren Craft Brew, so Siren, a, a UK um, brewery, um, and it's called Pommel Mocello, which is a juicy grapefruit, grapefruit, sorry, sour IPA. Um, runs at six percent. Um, I have tried it before, and yeah, it's it's beautiful. It's from Berkshire, so south of England. Right on. And Ari, what love that can down too. There? I have uh, I've got a good old classic Peroni here. Unfortunately, that was all I had left in my fridge. So I'm sorry, boys, I let you down. But this is a pretty damn good beer, and it's actually showing up on the screen too. Last time we were in space recording, and you couldn't really see it, but. Uh, this is a very classic. I think it's an Italian, Italian yeah. beer. Uh, I super palatable, really drinkable. It's like five point five percent, I think. So it might even be a little bit lower than that. It's my heritage, so I, I'm not I'm not upset about it. What about you, Todd? What are you drinking there, homie? Well, I did a little theme here uh, since we're talking with someone from the UK. Uh, Although this beer is from Austin, Texas, I should preface <laughs> by saying first, uh, this is a uh, Blue Owl Brewing, which is from Austin, Texas, and uh, this is called Cool in the Gang, which is very festive for the can. Uh, it's a session sour uh, with Earl Grey tea, uh, and I've had one before. Uh, mm. We're actually going to feature this a little later in the week on our show, um, but this tastes like an Arnold Palmer in a way, like just lemonade and tea, and it's super solid. Uh, Ari, you actually might be close to uh, my ABV. I think it's like only, oh, I don't know if they're showing it on a can, but I did look it up earlier. I think it's only like three or four percent, so it's very low. <laughs> so, pro- proper session, then. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, it's super crushable for the summer. It gets hot down here in Texas. So, uh, yeah, I would actually pair this with some of our barbecue down here. Uh, yeah, great, great summer beer. Uh, all right, y'all, let's let's do a countdown. We'll, we'll we'll do a crack and a cheers. All right, in three, two, one. Ooh. All right, brutal, y'all. Cheers, boys. Cheers. cheers. Oh yeah. Yeah, I actually almost wish I did have a glass to pour this out, like. If I poured it out, you guys would just think it's iced tea. I do love that's iced awesome. tea. That's, <laughs> it's got to be like a uh, like a shandy. Well, that's a good color too, there, John. Yeah, it's nice. Um, I mean, you can tell it's 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 fruited, but it's still nice yeah. and hoppy. It's quite light. It's quite balanced. It's, yes, it's a nice drink. It's a good head on that board too. Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, you got to to kind of segue with our beers there, John. I mean, you got. A quite a quite an array for this particular recording uh you were showing it before we started hitting the the play button there so are you like are you big into the craft beer scene in the in the uk how is it for you we, we've talked to a couple bands from the uk and they always of course like anywhere like they're always kind of saying uh you know different things but the one constant on any episode that we've talked to someone from your neck of the woods is always brew dog and uh right rightfully so i mean they're they're big yeah. brewery they are i mean i wouldn't i wouldn't so i, I it's slightly hypocritical because i have a brew dog beer with me tonight um i don't rate brew dog really they're kind of the they're the ones that put craft brewing on the map in the uk right so right. um they made it big with punk ipa um and they've done quite a few follow-ups from that um and they 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 became quite big quite fast they're quite quite a mainstream brewery now um and so you don't get that kind of like small batch um unique kind of drinks that you get from a lot of breweries um i mean i mentioned an email beforehand a brewery i really like is a one from wales called tiny rebel and they do all of their drinks are inspired by sweets 
Um, so they do nice. uh, Club Club Tropica, which is like a tropical IPA, and um, the rhubarb and custard sour, which I mentioned, and then the marshmallow Sounds porter. Okay. Um, like they're all they're all really interesting beers. Um, but yeah, I mean, I, I love I love craft beer. Um, I've only really started getting into stouts recently. I started on IPAs, um, and yeah, edged into sours and only really got into sours because of the real well and custard sour so um but yeah I'm, yeah i mean craft beer is huge in the uk like absolutely massive and we get like craft cider now um and i'm from the countryside so i really like cider i, I drink a lot of cider um yeah i i, I, I love beer <laughs> we, i mean we i knew we were here. Good company yeah <laughs> yeah so this is this is why i couldn't turn it down when i got the invitation the label was like these guys, they like metal and they like craft beer. I'm like, yeah, I'm in. No one else is doing it, just me. Just me. It's a pretty good formula, I, we, we like to think. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, that, that sounds awesome, dude. And we're super stoked to have you here. And then kind of getting into the mean potatoes, as The Rock says in Fast and Furious <laughs> 5. I always love to make that joke. That's that That's we. Great, great reference, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> That was the last good one, in my opinion, and that's that's still a bit of a stretch. But anyway, uh, you know, drinks aside, because I, I do, as we progress, want to hear you know what else you got in your repertoire over there. Sure. But Memorist is, well, I mean, we can't not talk about the fact of just the name itself, Memorist, and your memory in general. You have a photographic memory is that um, accurate kind of bordering on eidetic um i would say so i think it's just sheldon cooper big bang theory says uh, uh, a photographic memory is a misnomer um so okay. you can have what's almost an eidetic an eidetic memory um so i i remember sequences of events and faces and things that happen in a great a, a great level of detail uh, kind of excruciating detail um more so when they are unpleasant um or it is you know something that maybe the average person might not want to experience um and i'll, I'll quite often find myself someone will say oh you know this i'll say something and someone will go, that that wasn't the way it happened or that's not what was said and i said no no i think you'll find you're wrong it, it actually was um so yeah that's kind of where the name comes from um and inviting people into kind of the things that I write about, which are my personal experiences, my memories, the things I've been through, um, which I'm sure we'll come on to explore a little bit um, in a little while. Um, but yeah, that's 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 where the name comes from. Um, and yeah, it just, it just kind of stuck. It took us ages to come up with it. <laughs> <laughs> that's usually how it goes for a band name. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's it's funny, too, because like, uh, in the one bio that was sent over, uh, one of the descriptors was just like very memorable, like songwriting and just like the melodic aspects of it. I'm like, this, it really is like, not just because we're talking with you, like the, the songwriting is, is excellent. And Thank you. going into, so I, I guess I'm kind of like jumping ahead of myself here a little bit. We'll start with right now. Mm -hmm. You just announced <clears throat> that the newest single is going to be coming out quite soon. And yep. on top of that, everything that, that Memorist has put out so far has been singles, correct? There's, there's no EP, there's no album. Or... No, nothing. Okay. Yeah, it's just singles so far. So um, we started off with our first single, uh, which is Lost, which was in November of 2019. Um, the second single love came out in the January of 2020 and the third single frustration came out, I think in the March. So there was kind of a, a two month lag between each single there. Um, we then, we had already started writing an EP, uh, with the view to finish tracking it and release it in the summer of 2020. Um, and then COVID, um, so mm -hmm. you know that didn't happen um and eventually we finally got around to finishing the tracking for it, it oh, i mean it wasn't finished until probably about four months ago um oh sure and now we've got yeah this this series of singles so we start with the empiric which came out in july <laughs> and then second sequences came out in august um, and then the next single which is called sliver um which will come out um on the 3rd of september 
Talk to us a little about just the the progression of these singles. Um, in my mind, they're connected in a way by themes, but uh, you know, let us know just a, a little brief uh, history about each of them. Uh, I know "Loss" is a, a very personal track for you. Um, yeah, yeah. Just uh, do a little in depth on each, if you don't mind. Sure. Um, so yeah, "Loss" uh, was written about um, a very close friend of mine. Um, he was a tattoo artist, actually. He did most of my work on my arms. Um, oh, yeah. uh, one of my old roommates, um, a guy called Jack Allender. And he died unexpectedly in August 2018. Um, and we were really, really close. You know, we'd, 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 we'd drifted a little bit apart. We moved to different cities, and, and then we got back together. And, you know, I saw him the week before he died, and he was happy, and all was going well. And then, yeah, the next week he was, he was dead. Um, and that's where that song came from. And the experiences associated with that and, you know, the, the, the aftermath and his family and everything else. Um, the second single, Love, um, <laughs> an interesting one, actually. So um, that was actually about um, an ex of mine. <laughs> I was with her at the time. She'd left me. She cheated on me. Um, she came back to me and it was very, very toxic. And it was kind of almost bittersweet. Um, and that's that's one that one was about. Um, and we'll come back to that person momentarily um and then frustration <laughs> was about about the same situation frustration was about um the time that she cheated on me and and uh the person that she cheated on me with and you know the fact that i knew all about it but she denied it to my face um so that was that was kind of that series of events um, I'm, I'm condensing here because i'm aware of time um the empiric is so, so yeah those, those first three singles um were, were firmly rooted in kind of emotions yeah, the feeling of loss, the feeling of love, and and that that feeling of the, the bittersweet feeling of love, and that feeling of frustration of, you know, dealing with someone who won't admit to their own uh, failings and their own, their own wrongdoings. Um, the empiric took a very kind of hard right turn. Um, so the empiric is about um, the COVID nineteen pandemic, and more specifically, it's about the handling of the COVID nineteen pandemic by Western governments and the failures of Western governments. Um, and also the kind of ignorance and um, general stupidity. I know, I know I've experienced it in this country, but I've spoken to guys in America and Australia and all over the, the, the world who have experienced the same thing. Of the general public that, you know, denied its existence or refused to wear a mask or refused to be vaccinated or, or whatever else, you know. Um, and, you know, each, each and everyone is entitled to their own views. Uh, but my belief is if your views put others at risk, then there's something wrong there. You know, your, your, yeah, own, but your, own, personal views, your own personal, yeah, yeah. Your own personal views and personal choices. You put yourself at risk, put yourself at harm. Fine. That's your choice. It's your life. Do what you want with it, but not the people's. Um, so that was, that was that kind of segment. And that was the first time really, um, I've ever written, um, something about something that was political or, um, uh, kind of driven by perceived injustice within society. Um, and I, I mean, I was on the kind of the forefront of it because I was working in education at the time. Um, and we oh, had, yeah, okay. you know, ministers in this country saying, oh, yeah, schools are safe. Schools, schools are fine. Yeah, you go to school, go, go, go to work. And I was having the kids come into my classrooms who had COVID um, and they were passing on to their classmates. And then the other kids' parents were dying. Like there were oh, like man. four wow. parents in, of kids in my school who died um, because wow. the government said, well, schools are safe because – they knew it would impact the economy if they closed the schools because right. parents would have to take time off work. And that, that's what it was about, you know, that, that sort of thing. Anyway, that, that's a, a long one on that one. Um, the rest of the singles um, are really about my experiences over the last 12 months, a little over 12 months. We're talking kind of like probably since um, just the start of the pandemic, really. Um, and the relationship that I mentioned earlier that I was in um, became increasingly more toxic. Um, we had one child already, um, and things were difficult, uh, but we had a second child and things got more difficult. Um, and you know, to cut a long story, sto story short, many things happened and there was an awful, uh, event towards the end of last year. Um, and I was blamed. Um, I, I, I kind of put my hands up and, 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 and admitted to an accident, something, something bad that happened. Um, and I, I was, I was made out to be, to be the devil. Um, and that's the, that's the way it's unfolded since then. And it's, it's, it's mainly 
I think we mainly explored the changing dynamics of the family and how having children uh, affects young families, how it affects some people, and the impacts of pre and postnatal depression. It, it, it's, it's hard to explain without talking about each of the tracks that are, aren't yet out, which you can't really do. Um, yeah, right. Se- second, se- second sequence covers that that kind of change in the, fin- uh, the family dynamic, and Slither, um, which is the one that comes out next, um, is really about my mental health and um, the impact that she had had on my mental health, and the place, the, the, the kind of darkest place that I got to during the the kind of period of quarantine, um, and, and 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 how I recovered and up until now. Um, so the rest of the EP is really, really very personal, and there's there's a lot that I can't say about it. Um, but yeah, it's it's. I mean, I, the people who have heard it have, have listened to the tracks and read the lyrics and gone, "This is heavy," and it is. You know, it it is. It's quite heavy stuff. For so, sure. Yeah. Anyway, that was that was quite long and rambly. So I'll, <laughs> if you need to cut Not me off on the next question, you cut me off. Oh no! Don't worry at all. Yeah, we we appreciate we the insight and, and and the in, and the depth on on each of those because uh, I mean yeah. it's it's very prominent in your music, just uh, especially the lyrics and and just how personal they are and um, uh, just how they translate to other people and how they take it. Uh, is, is that very much a on purpose thing for you to to um, you know not only tell your own personal stories but uh, you know maybe it helps to impact someone else. Yeah, I mean, this is something I set out to do quite early on. Um, my lyrics and, and all the music I've made before Memories have always been personal, but I've I've never been quite as literal. Um, and I think the, the thing that, that kind of, it only really resonated me, with me once we released Loss, but like everyone's had someone that dies at some point. You know, everyone mm-hmm. has experienced right. loss in some capacity, whether that's the loss of a, a pet or a, a relationship or, you know, whether their granddad's died. Um, and you know, most people hopefully have experienced love and a lot of people have experienced love have experienced the negative aspects that are associated with that as well. Um, and the idea that you, I could invite people into my experiences and in some way they, they, I would resonate with them. They could share in that. Um, and that it would be meaningful for them. I mean, writing music for me is cathartic. It's like therapy. Um, so for people to listen to it, like the number of messages we go got after loss saying, Oh, you know, my friend died and you know, this song really helped me or, you know, I totally, I totally identify with this song. I've been in that sort of relationship and you know, I know exactly what it's like. And that became very important for me. And, and that was something I really wanted to try and um, progress with this next body of work. And talk a little bit about the progression uh, musically. Just, um, I think we had a quote here from, uh, I believe it was heavy.com, but uh, there's a, a fascination with uh, being more cinematic um, and having mm-hmm. electronic elements that blend with the organic traditional band stuff. It's noticeable. Uh, and honestly, yeah. we love it. And we also love, uh, you've gone a little heavier with some of the recent singles. Uh, yeah. we, we just love that here <laughs> on Brutal. Uh, but uh, was that very much on purpose? You wanted to try a little bit more uh, of a harder edge on some of this? uh most recent stuff yeah um so a lot of the songwriting force comes from our guitar player chris and our other guitar player ash so i have to give them props because i'm not i'm not the main songwriter by any by any stretch you know i write the write the melodies and write the lyrics um but yeah they do a lot of the work um and we have hu- we have hugely diverse music tastes between us like i mean our bass player's favorite band is jumiroquai um nice. like <laughs> our, our, our drummer awesome. listens yeah our drummer listens to huge amounts of Blink One Eight Two. Um, uh, our our synth guy Craig, he is a synthwave producer, so he listens oh, to loads nice. of like amb- ambient synthwave stuff. Um, and then I listen to like, I mean, the new Lorna Shaw song is just crazy. Like that, I'm, I'm, I'm all about that. But equally, right. I, I like I like hip hop and UK drill and trap. So you know, we're all over the place, um, and we've got lots of things we want to try. Um, but that kind of cinematic aspect like we all love Hans Zimmer like I could literally listen to Hans Zimmer soundtracks all day long exactly like (laughs) you watch The Dark Knight and I watch Christian Bale for a little while and then all of a sudden I just kind of find myself slipping into a kind of a Hans Zimmer uh, almost like coma um, because I'm just getting so drawn into the soundscapes Um, and we wanted to get that across but equally like we really like some heavy music so we wanted to try and have a heavier edge in there Um, and we have this kind of inside joke that we want to write quote unquote heavy pop bangers right um hell yeah and that's but that's like album territory 
Okay. Do you know what I mean? Like right, we, we right. did kind of learn the like alt rock metal edged thing with loss and love and frustration, and that was cool. We kind of got that out of our system, um, and we we really started to find our sound. I mean, we we probably demoed like twenty songs, and oh wow, there's That's only sick. a selection of that that have actually kind of come out. Um, the empiric being quite heavy, second sequence not being so heavy, um, sliver. I think is a bit of a wild card. Um, okay. So I, I actually, I actually like seeded the idea cards. for Sliver. Yeah, I mean, it is, it is a wild card. If you like, do you like eighties <laughs> music? Yes. Oh yeah, I right, love, right. so I you love like, a lot it, of genres and what If you like, is, if you yeah. like Phil Collins, if you like Phil Collins, if you like Duran Duran, if you like the Human League and Depeche Mode, you probably like Sliver. Um, That's a good nice. taste I, to that. I, I, I basically, I, I seeded the idea with a synth pad, um, and I was like, oh, that's cool. Um, and then wrote like a uh, do, 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 sort of um, 80s kind of step synth thing. Can and then it became already. this. Yeah, well, well I hope not. Uh, yeah. <laughs> but it became this kind of like this this this, this big 80s inspired. Um, well, it's hard to explain, but yeah, so that's, that's a different one. And then it gets. The next track's kind of a bit more like our original stuff, which is what we were filming the video for today. Uh, we were talking about that earlier. And then the last track right. is heavy. Like the last track is really, really heavy. Um, like heavier than anything we've ever done before, um, and nice. I, I, I mean, it's my favourite. Um, I can't wait for people to hear that one. Um, but yeah, I mean, we just wanted to just just explore things and figure out what we like making, and um, and there's loads more that we have coming after this that you know isn't even there yet, and that is in different areas again. Um, our music's about evolving. Music, music is about oh, development and growth you know it's not it doesn't it doesn't have to be static um and i hate bands that release three albums of the same songs do you know what i mean like yeah oh, i don't I, I can't name and shame that'd be really bad for me to do but i think we can all, can all pick, <laughs> pick, pick, pick a band from your head and you can go yeah that album sounded well like i mean album, we could pick a positive one i mean one that stands out recently is is how loathe has transformed mm -hmm. very much so uh and to me, experimentation reaps rewards, and uh, we've recently seen that with uh, Deaf Heaven has uh, drastically yeah. changed their sound. Um, okay. And that I've never actually listened to Deaf Heaven, so. Oh, this new one is very much uh, heavy on the shoegaze, no black metal influence whatsoever now, and it's a lot. If you would pop your, if you will, but uh, yeah, yeah, it's a total departure for them. But yeah, I mean, we we. Here we love it all. Like we, we're actually big new metal fans, so we, we love just mm. any experimentation. Um, you can think of just just blending stuff and seeing what works and, and kind of throwing it out there and seeing if it sticks. We're all about that here. Well, I think I think you're. Um, I mean, you, you probably detected some new metal vibes on um, on second sequence. Um, definitely, there's de there's definitely a lashings of it on the empiric, but the empiric kind of strays more into that kind of like bouncy, the industrial metal sort of area. Um, there, is, there is new metal galore, <laughs> kind of chucked all over the place on the rest of the songs. So yeah, I hope, I hope you guys dig it when when you hear it. Dude, um, honestly, just the UK scene are. alone, we very much dig. Uh, Ari and I were uh, just the other day talking about Trash Boat and just how they've mm -hmm. changed up their sound. And then uh, another big one I told so them good. to check out, uh, more of alt rock with hip hop is strange bones i don't know if you are aware of them but uh I'm they're all over the place they're Great. all over the place and i love it but uh just these these blends that we're hearing and i don't know what it is over in the water there but you guys got something <laughs> going on we're a small island and there's nothing to do and it's always <laughs> raining yeah. more time do? to drink right. and more time to write music Honestly, if you're from the UK, you either drink or do recreational drugs, and then you either <laughs> use that productively or you use it to go out and fight people. That's pretty much what happens over here. I mean, we do know a little bit about the the football games over there, so yeah. Oh uh, yeah, we, yeah. I mean, football's not my camp. I'm a, I'm a rugby guy. Oh, I'm, right. I'm more I'm, a, I'm more about big guys hitting each other on the field, and not idiots hitting each other in the crowd. You know what I mean? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That's fair. That's fair. Very eloquently said. What can um, I say? <laughs> to to go back real fast to uh, you had mentioned filming a new video for uh, another one off the EP and mm -hmm. just talking about the lyrical content in general. You mentioned with the empiric being about COVID and the pandemic um, mm -hmm. and 
off record, quote unquote, before we started recording, we were talking about kind of having themes like in your uh, in your look and like on Instagram and whatnot and kind of change again with each each single. Uh, I noticed that like with the stuff for the Empiric, like y'all had masks on and whatnot. It was yep. like a very industrial and like just the wires that were coming. I love that video. I think it's it's super sick. I love the color Thanks, palette man. in there. Um, what goes into like the new look of the band because between like frustration love and loss and the empiric like at least aesthetically from from an outsider perspective it looks like that you guys are kind of going into like a specific look is is that kind of what you're doing with the the videos and the uh the graphic design because i know you had mentioned that you're you do graphic design now in one of your emails too yes um i mean i don't want to give too much away um, the Empiric Go ahead was, and spell it all. yeah, I'll tell you everything. <laughs> <laughs> the, Empiric, the, the Empiric was a bit of a standout and the, the masks. So we got a lot of, um, oh, Hey, it's North Lane comments because we had, we had masks. You can see on. that for sure. That's like yeah, too easy um, to comment. Yeah. Yeah. And I mean, like, I, I, I don't, I'm not, I don't take offense to that because North Lane are great. Um, I mean, actually I should caveat that alien by North Lane is great. Um, but I love that album. It's, it's it's impeccable. Like it's it's, yes. it's so well done. Um, but the mask thing is a COVID reference. Like the, the whole the whole like of the video, literally on the, the nose. Whole, like, come on. Exactly. The whole idea behind it. I mean, like the empiric is literally a, a reference to um, fake plague doctors, right? Um, so in, oh, no shit. during the, the bubonic plague, um, there were two different types of plague doctors. There were ones that were known as the empirics and those who were the learned. So the empirics were those that acted upon empirical evidence, things that they believed to be fact. So they would, for example, wear the plague doctor mask, which we have in the video, and they would stuff it with potpourri, right. nice smelling things, flowers. And they would believe, because it was what they were told, that that would stop them from getting the plague. Well, they were wrong, because that fucking stupid. Um, <laughs> but, exactly. But then there were those that were the learned that they observed and they looked at things and they saw, well, hang on a second, this means this and this means this. And then they treated accordingly. Um, that's kind of like a nose to or a nod to the way that the, the UK government handled the pandemic and, and the fact that they did not act upon observation. They acted upon what they thought to be fact because they were dealing with something. They were, well, we've dealt with diseases before. It'll be just like this one. Again, it wasn't. Um, so that was why we had a plague doctor mask in the video. And the idea of it was almost that the video took place kind of within a simulation um, whereby things uh, had gotten yeah, okay. so bad that the only way for you to experience a memory was through some nice. sort of simulation. Hence the, the eyes open at the start of the video, the eyes open at the end of the video, um, you know, the, the glitches and the wires okay. and all that sort of thing, you know, a bit matrixy, that, that, kind of, that, was, that was where the nod went to. It was kind of like 90s, early 2000s sci-fi. Um, but that was a bit of a standout one. So... Yeah, you mentioned the theme. Sorry, Ari, Ari I'm, I'm kind of bouncing around between between your question no, here. But yeah, the, the this theme. Is good. So, green for the empiric was you know green virus. Um, and if you notice any of our interactions on social media as well, um, we try and keep it very themed. So, yeah, green virus um, and, and wires. Yeah, simulation that sort of thing. Um, and you kind of link that to computer virus if you want to kind of go down that road. Um, second sequence was blue, um, and that was about having a second child um hence second sequence uh, um it's I not because it's a second single that. which is yeah, a lot of people okay. think um and dna is the the kind of link there we didn't do a video for that one we did a visualizer um but cables wires and but ducting kind of forms a theme for the whole ep um which are also links to the kanji which we use which i'll talk about in a second um Slither, which is the next one, which will be out, I believe, by the time this comes out, so we can, we can talk about that, um, which we released the artwork for today anyway, um, is yellow. Um, Slither is a reference to a serpent um, and the way in which an abusive partner kind of slithers in to your mm. head and controls the way you feel. Um, so yellow, yellow belly, serpent, that sort of thing. Um, and we have two more tracks that have two more colors and two more themes. Um, the video for Slither, um, and there is going to be a video for Slither, and it will be out a little bit later than the single, um, but I feel like I'll probably okay. kind of reveal it, um, is, is water um, and isolation. Um, uh, and, and 
the kind of feeling of uh, being isolated and being desolate when being with someone um, and how that's kind of represented in the, uh, I don't want to give too much away because otherwise it will spoil it when it comes out. But it, there's a theme for each each video. And, and equally, like I said, with the kanji, um, it, it, there is, so the empiric was, um, plague was the was the kanji, what the, the kanji meant for that one. Um, second sequence means um, boy, second child. My second child is a boy that in, in, in Japanese. Okay. Um, the kanji for slither is a serpent. Um, and there are more. Um, the last two tracks are actually the name of the EP, but in inverse. So we're not releasing nice. the tracks in order that they're on the EP. Um, and the EP is named after the first and last track on the EP. Nice. Um, and that's Oni Kijo, um, which is literally demon, she demon. Um, nice. And nice. That that will become apparent through the artwork as a whole as well. So everything's themed, you know, everything everything ties together, um, and I think that's really important. And yeah, uh, um, you, I think Ari, it was you that asked, or I've been told, I'm not sure, um, about me doing graphic design. You know, I I, yes. I have yes. an agency called Sundown Creative, so um, I do all the artwork in house. Um, with the help of Chris, our, our guitar player, um, we come up with all the video treatments. You know, we 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 come up with the okay. ideas for them, um, storyboard them roughly very roughly um, and then I have to give a shout out to um, to Sean uh, Loki Films um, he's a, a British um, videographer director producer man of many incredible talents um, and we go to Sean and we go hey we've got this idea how do we make it work <laughs> or yeah. we go hey we've got this idea we think we can make it work in this way what do you reckon and he'll go yeah sure or nah um, and <laughs> then we tweak the idea and then eventually we shoot the idea and then we go, hey, Sean, can you make it look really good, please? And he goes, yeah, okay. And then he yeah, gives us a finished video and we're like, yeah, nice one, guy. Um, <laughs> but yeah, that's that's the process. And again, it took ages to answer it, so I'm really sorry. Oh, no worries Not at all. all. Um, talk a little bit about, uh, I believe I read, uh, Second Sequence was the first one you guys recorded as a, a group together. Um, is Almost. that correct? The first one Almost. We, no, the first one we wrote as a group. First one um, we wrote together, okay. You know, stereotypically, you, you write music as a band, you get in the practice space, you sit down together, you write music, right? Um, we don't write like that. So I live in the West Midlands, which is one part of the UK, um, and then the rest of the guys live around the Southwest, but we're like two and a half okay. hours from each other. Everything is done at home remotely. So I showed Todd earlier, I'm in my home studio right now. Um, it's a bit messy, so sorry, cardboard boxes in the corner, don't look at them. Um, <laughs> and the other guys have their own studios and we, we write remotely. Um, whereas Second Sequence was, you know, the guys got together, I wasn't there actually, I can't I can't take credit for this. Um, the guys got together to jam, just to jam okay. some of the existing songs. And um, Ben started playing a drum beat, um, that drummer. And then I think it was Chris came up with a little guitar lick to go on top of it. And then Josh, the bass player, wrote a bass line and then we had a song. Well, that's the first time oh, we've yeah. ever written a song like that, and we haven't done one like it since. So, um, yeah, it was it was a a different way of doing things for us. I, I guess it was that a little bit in, enjoyable that you got to do that finally, or, or is that a sign of things to come? Or as this pandemic tries to figure itself out, is it is it pretty much going to be that same route for a mm. bit? No, I think I mean I I hate writing like that. I'm a singer. I can't. Oh, yeah. You know, I can't, I can't stand in a room with people and I don't have a, a pad of lyrics ready to go. <laughs> like, that's not the way I write. I, I have melody ideas, I hear a song, I have a melody idea and then I have a story I want to tell and I, I work it that way, but I can't do that in a room with people around. Um, and equally, right. like, our music is so synth heavy, synth driven, like electronic elements driven, like, you wouldn't necessarily know it listening to one of the songs, but you can't stand at the edge of the practice studio for an hour going, I'm just tweaking the synth sound guys. Hang on. Like it doesn't right. work. That's um, true. Whereas in the studio I can tweak and tweak and fast. Like Slither, I said, I mentioned earlier that I seeded the idea for Slither with a, with a synth and it's, if you know anything about synthesis, so it's, um, synth I built in Massive X, it's, uh, um, so it's that's FM synthesis is it's frequency mod modulation. Um, and it uses an LFO. Um, now I don't know what an LFO means, but I know what it does. So it essentially uh, modulates some of 
Yeah, exactly. It modulates some of the elements within the synth to kind of make it kind of go whoop, 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 whoop. Okay. Like a, a kind of like I a think dubstep scene. Everyone scene, can relate to that sound, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Um, that took me like 12 hours to make. <laughs> oh, man. Like, and I had to automate it all in by hand, and it took forever. And it sounds great, but I can't do that in the practice space. That's just not realistic. So, yeah, I, I don't think things will go that way. Um, I think we will probably continue to write as we are. In fact, we're already writing. I'm not going to say what we're writing for, but we're writing for the next stage <laughs> after this body of work. Um, and we're already like six tracks in and none of it's happened in the practice space. So nice. Yeah. Dude, that's Any, the, I, on mean, that note, I love all these teases you're doing. I am going to, yeah, I was going to say, yeah, you're, you're, you're damn near yes, down with the that. last one. So let's, let's get I mean, the second. Guys, I've been, I've been in the car for like nearly six hours today. And I've been walking around the beach for like probably about another six hours. So, so you're I'm, thirsty. You're, yeah. You need thirsty. to hydrate. I'm a, I'm a thirsty man. Um, so for <laughs> anyone who, who actually cares, um, this is Jaipur, Everyone. which is one of my favorite beers of all time. Um, it's by a British brewery, again, called Thornbridge. Jaipur is an IPA, an Indian pale ale, hence the name Jaipur. Uh, but this is the DDH, the double dry hopped Jaipur, which is uh, comes in at 5.9%. Um, and it says use the, the same recipe um, for the 15th anniversary of Jaipur. Um, but apparently it's an even punchier tropical fruit character. So um, we're going to have a little pour. Um, I haven't cleaned my glass out. That's sacrilege. I'm sorry. Um, Better flavor. It's, um, sorry. It's, yeah. You're just experimenting. Oh, good pour. That's, that's what's going on here. And the glass to boo. You're, you're fucking on it, man. Yeah, you have like the right proper glass. Like Either this says that I'm really into craft beer or I drink too much. I don't know which one it is. <laughs> Could be I both. mean, you're preaching to the choir, man. It's, it's all good. Ooh, I mean, yeah, that's, that's 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 a very that's a very foamy boy. I was gonna say, if um, we're rating pours, that, that's a ten out of ten, right there. That's yeah. Is that what you class as a ten in the states? So honestly, <laughs> you know what? It's becoming more of a thing. If you have a nice head, it's actually uh, like a good thing now. Mm -hmm. I know this this uh, over here. You know, if you're at a bar and that's what you get at a bar, that's <laughs> you can punch so the bar. I, I used if to spend want. a lot of time. Yeah, <laughs> I used to spend a lot of time in Europe and um, in Belgium. And in the Netherlands, they love head on beer. Like you'll yeah. you'll buy a um, a third of a liter, a three hundred and thirty mil, uh, which is I think probably what you got Ari, in your and actually well you probably got for your for your can as well three thirty mil. Um, uh, you, it's not it's not milliliters over there, is it? So I was going to say yeah, yeah. Uh, I, th I think twelve ounce is is what this is. That's, a, that's about yeah, uh, twelve ounce is about three thirty mil. Um, okay, yeah, you, yeah, we you both have that, that then. It, it would be half head. And I'd turn around to the bartender, I'd say, can I have some more beer, please? And you always get this look of like, bloody British coming over here and asking for more beer. <laughs> I'm like, bro, if I'm paying, if I'm paying you five euros for, for what is a, a, essentially less than half a pint, give me more beer. But, you, but you're, uh, you're digging that one that you said that's one yeah, of your it's favorites. Nice. I, it's, I, I don't, I'll be honest. I don't think it's as nice as the original. Okay. I don't think it's as good as the original. The 15th anniversary, I mean, it's got it's a lovely, a lovely smell. It's really, really fruity on the nose, but it's quite, I'd, I'd say quite floral, um, almost too much so. Like, it, it's not, it's not hoppy in, a, in a, what I'd say is a nice way. Um, okay. It's How, hoppy how's but like heavy. The, the back end taste on the tongue, does that stick around too much or? It's a, it's a, it's a bit bitter. Um, mm. And I think that's a failing of, of kind of traditional IPAs. This is why I like a lot of craft IPAs. Um, so the siren that I had before, the, you know, it was, it's, it's a juicy, sour, tropical, uh, super sour grapefruit IPA. So you've got all that complexity flavor, but it's still a really light finish. You know, I'm not, I'm not getting this lingering bitterness at the back of my palate, which I do actually get with this, um, which you know works for some people. Some people like a, a multi IPA. I'm not about that, but. Mm -hmm. I, I, I will drink it because it cost me three pounds. <laughs> I do want to bring it back because uh, being the lyricist of Memorist and just having the type of memory that you have, I really, throughout this entire interview, just really want to know when you mentioned writing, you mentioned it mm -hmm. as a cathartic process. Now, yeah. I've listened to podcasts and like interviews and stuff where they, uh, specifically, I've brought this up on the show before, but there's a a podcast called Lead Singer Syndrome with yeah. Shane Told. Do you know that one? I don't, but I, this, the phrase Lead Singer Syndrome made me laugh. 
<laughs> it's a really good show. It's with the Silverstein's lead singer, and he gets like cool. a very wide variety of front men and women. Uh, highly recommend. But he was talking to uh, Chris Roeder from like Moths to Flames, if you're familiar with that band. Yeah. Um, and just because both those bands write about much to yourself, write really personal songs about their experiences. And Shane mm. would ask Chris, he's like, do you feel like the same sense of emotion when you sing the songs as like when you first wrote them? Um, so I guess a long winded question, um, because you have such uh, the memory that you do. And it's in excruciating detail. Does that make it harder to sing these songs that you're reliving certain situations? Or is it, in fact, more cathartic? I would say it's it's probably the, the sense that it's more cathartic. I mean, it varies um, in the sense that obviously emotions ever change. You know, it's, it's, they're not constant. Um, right. And, you know, like, so Jack died... God, four years ago. In fact, almost four years ago to the day. No, three years ago, sorry, to the day, almost. Oh, shit. Sure. Um, yeah, I think it was the 20, 27th. Um, oh, wow. Oh, yeah. And, Pretty you know, close. I, I, I processed that. I, I dealt with that and I moved on. Um, and then literally two, three months ago, my best friend died at the same age, out of the blue. And... All yeah. of those emotions were brought back up again. We haven't performed because of COVID, but if I was to go out on stage and sing Loss within the last couple of months, it would feel completely different because I wouldn't just be singing about Jack, I'd be singing about Tom as well. Um, right. But no, generally, I think it's, it's a more cathartic process. I mean, writing a song about something is my way of dealing with it. Um, and when that song's penned and when that's recorded all of the things I want to say about it are carefully considered and they're written down and I, and I record them. And all of the emotions that I have about that situation are funneled into that track. Um, a live performance is a live performance. You know, you can be emotional on stage every night and it doesn't have to mean that you are overwhelmed with the emotion of the experience. You're overwhelmed with the emotion of being on stage. Um, it's like painting a painting. You know, yeah. a, a, an artist paints a painting and all of the emotion they want to put onto the canvas is in the moment the painting's created. Every time the painting is viewed or replicated, it, that, that emotion is not repeated or, or re-experienced for the artist. It's, it's simply a case of someone else wants to see that painting. Um, right. That's, that's, that's the way I feel about it anyway. It's, yeah. Recording the song ties... I, I'm a really big fan of recorded music. Um, I love live music, but recorded music is like, that's the thing for me. And um, that's what I like to do. Um, so, yeah, recording the song is kind of the ties a bow around it and goes, right, I've dealt with that now. Kindly fuck off and I'll go do something else. <laughs> <clears throat> okay. Uh, yeah, that that's a really excellent way of putting it. And that I think a lot of people, much to your lyrics, can can relate to having that type of outlet where you're taking what you're feeling and hopefully being constructive with it. I, I do that. I'm, I'm a filmmaker. So like, that's what I do with film. And like when I'm on sets, I know Todd, like we're, we're in similar fields. We both do video work. Um, mm. But it, it's just having that moment to be like, okay, you know, here's what I'm feeling. Here it is on the screen. You know, even if I'm not like directing it or like it's my project, like I could still put a, like how I'm feeling like into a project. So long story short, I, I really like how you how you phrased and described that that process. So that's pretty, pretty awesome. Thanks, man. I was going to spin off of that and just, uh, you know, the reception to, to each song. Um I know I, I think it was another interview uh some people uh were thinking of loss about a completely different subject even though it's a very personal one with with your friend dying but uh just how people have related to this song i'm sure they've probably either messaged you or commented just uh some of their feelings uh but just talk about the reception of the single so far and, and what that means to you um yeah i mean each one has been received in a different way uh as, as you just highlighted loss was I think for a lot of people lost, they attach their own meaning to it, which is great. You know, it was about a thing for me. 
Um, but if it can be about something else for someone else, then that's fantastic. And we had lots of people reach out about that one. Um, Love, similarly, um, you know, uh, some people thought it was a really happy song. Um, some people thought it was a really sad song. Um, and some people got it from where it's supposed to be, which is somewhere down the middle. You know, there are times when you're happy and there are times when you are miserable. Um, and, and, and more so when your relationship is toxic. Frust- frustration is kind of like our Jackie Brown. Um, nice. Do you get that reference? Tarantino. Yeah. 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 Cool. Um, so like some people love it. Like I love Jackie Brown. I think that's a kick-ass film. And some people are like, yeah, but it's not Reservoir Dogs or yeah, but it's not Pulp Fiction. I'm like, yeah, right. it's not, but Kill Bill isn't Pulp Fiction. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> are anyway, you sure um, though? <laughs> yeah, well, um, <laughs> so uh, for some people like, it, uh, yeah, it's kind of like a bit of a cult, cult fan favorite. Like some people are like, I absolutely love that song. It's your best song. I love that song. Um, the other guys hate it. Um, and it was the one that didn't do as well on, on streaming services is the one that didn't do as well on Dreambound. Like, you know, it, it, it was a bit rocky. Um, yeah, I don't know. So that, that one didn't have a crazy reaction. Um, the empiric, the reaction to the empiric was mental, like so crazy and not even like, it hasn't even really done that well on YouTube, but like our streams were through the roof. Uh, it got picked up by loads of playlists um, and the comments and the, the feedback that we got and like the reactions and stuff were crazy. Like you had fans going like, Oh my God, this is amazing. This, you know, it, but it was so different from what we'd done before. And well, we were expecting it. Right. So look, Chris and I started writing that right at the start of lockdown. And we started writing it remotely when our kids were in bed um, <laughs> over Skype or over FaceTime using Dropbox to kind of like ping ideas backwards oh, wow. and forwards from one another. Oh, and we yeah. were going, mate, no one's going to like this song. Like, this is weird. Like it's, it's not us. Like what are we doing? And the rest of the band were like, what are you doing? This isn't us. Everyone's going to hate it. <laughs> and then we put it out and, and everyone went crazy. And we're like, yeah, okay. You guys can never tell us ever again that we can't write songs, just the two of us over FaceTime. Um, <laughs> so, second sequence has been an interesting one as well. I mean, again, the other guys weren't mad keen on that song. Um, I didn't r- finish writing the vocals for it until really, really late on, like really late on. Um, and I think because they'd heard it instrumentally for so long, they were like, we don't like the song. Like it doesn't really go anywhere. Um, and then I was like, I'm going I'm to bang a big chorus on it. Um, and it has that huge soaring vocal in the chorus. And that's what people attach to when, when they listen to our music, they hear that the big chorus hook and they're like, okay, yeah, that's a memorous song. Um, and yeah, I think that's been pretty vibey. I don't have a clue how Slither's going to go down. <laughs> I, I have absolutely no idea. Um, I want people to love it because I love it, but like, it's quite a long track. Um, it's quite a slow track. It's quite different from anything we've done before. Um, <laughs> who knows? But yeah, the, the reaction the, 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 from fans and from press and from everyone varies dramatically from song to song. Um, but I mean, we're, we're still such a young band. Like we've got we're five true, songs yeah. out. Yeah, that's it. You know, we've we've done right. we've done so little. I mean, we have we're an average age of thirty um, between us, and we've all been in bands before, and we all kind of gave up and went, ah, we'll get a real job. Um, <laughs> and then we we put out some music like just for a hobby, and and it kind of went, Oof. and we went, all right, well, let's do a thing then. Um, so it's uh, it's hard to say, like. Talk to me in a year's time. <laughs> Come back to me. Have me back, have me back the, in a year. The have fall me back in a year. Yes. Yeah. All right. Well, everyone heard it. It's August 24th, 2021. <laughs> August 24th, 2022. We're getting John back on here. Okay. See how things are going. <laughs> but but to your point, it, it is really interesting and funny how the reception works for certain things like you love something so much and you want everyone else to love it so much but then that's the one that does like the least or it's, yeah. it's like the least digestible it doesn't do as well and then the one you're like like the empiric you're like this isn't 
this isn't going to go anywhere. And then it's the biggest one. And, and even to like just music in general, you know, it's when you're younger, like, you know, like we'll say teenager, early twenties, like all you want to do is like push, push, push. We need to get this record. We need a tour, blah, blah, blah. And then it just doesn't work out. And then you do it because you love doing it and be like, Oh, actually cool. Now people are taking a liking to it. It's been 10 years, but like, that's cool that it's finally picking up. Uh, but it just goes to show like the it's a product of the time. You know, we're talking about other bands that that have made like drastic changes in their music and and just talking to big one like UK bands specifically. You look at Bring Me the Horizon and Architects, mm -hmm. which are arguably yeah. two of the biggest bands, like not even just the scene, like just in general. And they're way different than when they were when they first started. I mean, you got two deathcore bands essentially now selling out like o2 academy like for like a week straight or what you know however many want they want to play but long-winded answer short it's just really fascinating to see how that progression is when you're either least expecting it or you're just not expecting it at all yeah i i mean it's it's interesting to look at a lot of bands like i mean you you referenced loathe earlier um todd i think you referenced loathe earlier <laughs> And um, so way back when, um, Connor, the guitar player from Loathe, and I, uh, we worked together. So he was in a, he was really nice. young. He was in a, he was in a band called Immerse, um, and I had a management agency um, when I was in my old band called Chronographs, and I managed Immerse, and I produced their first EP, and I did some guest vocals for them, and like they came on tour with us, and you know, all these bits and pieces, and like he was this young, fresh-faced kid with a guitar who just wanted to be really good, and like kept playing and kept playing and kept playing. And I was like, man, like, just, just, just chill. Like, if it's going to happen, it will happen. Um, and then I ducked out of the music industry. Um, I had a family and then I blinked and I'm like, fuck, that's Connor from Immerse in Loathe. Like, he's playing the heavy music awards, man. Like, what, what's going on? And I was like, dude, you made it. Like, it happened. It happened for you. And he just, he started playing bass, I think, in Loathe, first of all. And then... Started playing guitar for him, and it. yeah, okay. you know, he, but but Low is kind of like I mean they're on their third album, like it's taken them a little while, but they've gone like doof, 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 over over like Seriously. a very very short space of time, um, and I mean full disclosure and sorry Connor and and and, and the guys in Loath, I'm not even a big fan, like it's it's not even for me, but I can yeah. respect and appreciate what it is they do, um. It, it, it's just interesting to see how sometimes things just kind of go and it happens. Um, I mean, Sleep Token's another one. Really. You guys know Sleep Token? We're very aware Recently, of Recently, yes. yes. Yeah. Um, so Sleep Token's another really interesting one. Actually, I, I referenced Sleep Token in an interview I did recently about branding and, and, and branding and music um, or the business of music. Um, Sleep Token like was really, really quiet, really, really quiet, really, really quiet. And then like his there first show was download well their first publicized show was download in the uk and they put they like not even like the small stage opening on the sunday i'm talking like they're paying the second stage halfway up the bill on a saturday like it was a really good slot wow. and i was like looking at it like literally dude you've got like six tracks out like a year ago no one knew who you were what happened and then it's just poof I mean, that goes to, you're talking about like branding and whatnot from a business aspect. Like we, we've talked to, you know, not, not a ton of bands on here, but just following trends and whatnot, like having a specific look and thematic and just cinematic. I mean, we talk about that all the time on the show. Like we're huge fans of taking a journey through music and just, you mentioned soundscapes and Hans Zimmer, like that's what Memorist is doing. Like, you know, you have all these different layers like it's not i mean i i love traditional like black metal and death metal and, and whatnot but you know i'm not going through what i feel like a cinematic universe when i'm listening to it i'm there mm -hmm. because like i want to hear blast beats and i want to hear like soaring guitar solos for like two seconds and that's sick but like something with memorist or you know we're talking about north lane with alien just evoking emotions lyrically musically i mean sleep token does that too like they just mm. they're so weird but the music's so good <laughs> and you're like why does this like mm. this doesn't make any sense but especially coming out of pandemic and lockdown because like you said you have a lot of time 
to just sit there and create. And that's why it seems like a lot of people are vibing off of just, I mean, you guys have five singles out and no EP and you're already above a lot of bands that have been in the game for a number of years. It's just, you know, what are people really vibing with? And it seems like it is thematicism. It's the cinematic. It's just, I don't know. It's, it's just really, I guess, more thought provoking, at least for me. That's that's some of the, the metal that I really like is just like, I want to feel either like sad or angry or happy. And yep. that's, you know, when I'm listening to like uh, the Empiric from from you guys be like cool you know i'm i'm on a journey like i could see the video i feel like i'm in a simulation now like this is sick like is this really happening am i listening to this song i don't know but it makes me feel fucking great so yeah. kudos there's, there's, thanks man <laughs> and there's something to be said for a lot i i i i'm a firm believer in actually like if you're gonna feel emotion from music it shouldn't be from it shouldn't be from the words you know like the words and the way they sung have have an impact on a listener but there's so much to be said for how music affects you sonically. You know, if you have oh, a synth part, yeah. like, like Craig, our, our, our synth guy, I said earlier, our synth wave producer, um, just bring him a shout out to player one sounds. Um, he's, he's great. If you want to, if you want to have a nice, long, relaxing bath, go listen to Craig's synth wave. <laughs> um, but, uh, yeah, like he'll come up with a synth sound and I'm like, in fact, I mean, full disclosure, like I'm, I'm really pushing for the whole EP to just be released without me on it with no drums, with no guitars, no bass, oh, just, just instrumental. the synths, the synths and, and the electric percussion, because it's amazing. Like I can listen to it. I'm like, that'd be cool. It's like a, it's like a movie soundtrack. I'm about that. And it has its own emotive feel. Like you listen to it and you're like, just that one synth lead, like makes you feel a certain way. And that's what instrumentation should do. That's interesting to say that. Cause I know, uh, when I took a film class in college, my professor was very big on, uh, you can do a whole movie without dialogue and that makes it yeah. the most suspenseful thing and keeps it progressing forward. It's just uh, mm -hmm. how you can tell it through without having to say a word. I think that makes like a, or creates a, a more powerful message within like the sound. Have you guys um, been uh, uh, film guys? Have you seen Unshan and the Loop? I yeah. have not very actually. much enjoyed that film. So I'm missing out. So here. it's, um, it's a silent French film um, from, I think, oh, the 1920s. Um, and it, the yes, music in it is so suspenseful. Like, the atmosphere that's created just by the music, uh, I mean, uh, I can't watch it because it sets me off. Um, but there's loads of films like that. I mean, uh, what was it? A uh, Spanish film, uh, La Antena, um, or La Lantena. I'm not sure how to say it, Portuguese, Spanish film, um, no dialogue in that film whatsoever. I'm also a massive film buff, by the way, guys. So, you know, um, we could probably we're talk friends. for hours here, but we're going to, we're going to, we're going <laughs> to, we're going to write it in. Um, That's for the or, next you, know, you look at, yeah. you look at um, like Mexican cinema and uh, you look at like uh, Amores Pedos or uh, Ito Mama Tabien. And those films are so driven by the soundtrack. They're not driven by the audio or the or the or the, the dialogue. Sorry, the dialogue or the audio. They're driven by by what happens in the background. Or even like to, to reference something like more commercial. You look at Bright on Netflix. Right, that soundtrack makes that film. Like I'm not being funny. I love Will Smith. Like I would let Will Smith take me out for dinner. But <laughs> uh, read that how you will. Um, but the soundtrack makes that film. Do you know what I mean? Like, it, it, and yeah. music and and audio is so powerful. Um, I could, I could probably watch Inception without hearing Leo, Leo speak. It's it's funny because like going off of what both of you guys had said, but one of my favorite exercises when I was in film school was my senior my senior seminar, and we watched the movie Hero with Jet Li from from O two, mm -hmm. and there's this one specific fight sequence that's in the rain. Um, and I, I can't remember exactly like the, the specifics, but we watched it three times. So we watched it in its entirety, audio, visuals. And then the next time we just watched it, just the visuals. So we watched it on mute. And then the final time we just had the audio and the whole, the whole purpose of it is like, it's easier with audio to get a bigger picture than it is with the picture 
and accompanying the sounds because like if I'm looking at a picture of a cat and then I see its mouth open and then I hear a dog like mm. that's jarring to me but if I hear a dog I know it's a dog because that's that's what my brain is trained to do so yeah. to, to your point like any type of music is there to evoke an emotion and it's it is it's fascinating but but to your point before like w not wanting to have the lyrics or the guitars or the bass or anything on there like you know that that does bring like that whole other element to it because sometimes you know a lot of bands have been releasing like just the instrumentation of a, an album whatnot and you're like mm -hmm. wow this is but like i could hear like i could hear you singing a part in second sequence even though it's just the the soundscape and what's backing so it's just really powerful to be like cool you know even though it's not the entire package, like I'm still getting the entire package, like in my head. Mm. And I don't know if it's, if that's how it is for everyone, but I don't know. I get, I get weird. I love that stuff. Again, we could go <laughs> on for, for quite some time. <laughs> I think we probably could. Just to, to wrap it up. I mean, this, thank you so much, John, for coming on. This has been phenomenal, dude. Seriously. And, uh, I knew we were going to be friends even before we fucking started recording. <laughs> so this is sick. Um, I mean, unless you have any other questions, Todd, I was just going to let you plug away for, for memorist. Yeah. I, I, I mean, I feel like I'm beating a dead horse with some questions. So I, I would say let's, let's roll out the red carpet, uh, just for, uh, what's on horizon for you guys. Of course you have more releases coming up, but, uh, uh, feel free to share anything else you'd like. Oh yeah, cool. So, um, I mean, well, first of all, thank you for having me, guys. It's been, it's been a real pleasure. Like, uh, like I said earlier on, I mean, being invited to talk about my music and at the same time drink beer and talk about beer. <laughs> I mean, that's 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 not ever something I ever thought I'd get in my inbox. Like, yeah, come come drink beer, talk about the thing that you like doing. Yeah, cool. Um, but anyway, um, yeah. So, uh, for anyone who doesn't know, we are called Memorist. We are we we call ourselves alt metal because um, metalcore sucks, and um, you know. <laughs> That's, that's, that's the, the, the kind of genre label we've given ourselves because you have to come up with something edgy these days. Um, we are predominantly from the right. southwest of England and um, you can find us on every social media you can possibly think of. Um, so we've got Instagram, we've got Twitter, we've got Facebook, we've got YouTube. Um, there's nothing on our SoundCloud. Stop asking for music on SoundCloud because we don't make any royalties. It costs money to make music, guys. Come on. Um, you can buy our music on Bandcamp. You can listen to us on Spotify, Apple Music, Deezer, Pandora, Tidal. Uh, Amazon Music, Google Play, all the other places you could possibly stream, download, or buy music. Um, we also have our own website now, uh, memorist.co.uk, where you can buy uh, merchandise which is themed around each of our releases um, from the EP, and there will soon be kind of a backdated uh, kind of vintage catalog of previous releases as well. Um, uh, we also, uh, the, the minute we're doing, um, for each of the singles that we release, we're doing a limited edition t shirt. Um, which is printed on a premium quality garment, um, and it's, it's essentially a collect the whole set type type thing. So um, I can disclose at this point because it is going to be announced by the time this airs. Um, we are releasing an EP in November. It comes out the twelfth of November. That EP is called oh, Only yeah. Kijo, um, and that will be accompanied by the final track from the EP. Um, there will be physical pre-orders uh, available. They should be available as of this when it airs um, for um, Digipack CD versions of uh, the EP. Um, we wanted to do vinyl. We may do vinyl, but COVID's kind of thrown a spanner in the works on that front. Um, but there's going to be a whole host of, of, of loads of things that, that you guys can invest in and, and you can collect. Um, we're all about, you know, uh, having the fans involved in what we do. You know, that's kind of, kind of, part and parcel of the memorist experience so um you can get a piece of limited edition merchandise you can get a piece of uh, limited edition um uh, physical music um and you know we've got some really exciting exciting things planned for the rest of the year um there's plans to be out on the road before before christmas before the holidays as you guys call it um there's <laughs> plans uh, to be out on the road again next year um there's more plans for after the cp um and we yeah we're really excited about about what's coming up um so i think really just kind of yeah stay tuned and uh, we promise it won't be as long between the last this this lot of music and the next lot as it was between the last lot and this lot because <laughs> you know over a year between 
three one-off singles and an EP is a uh, is a bit sucky. Um, so yeah, um, I, th- I think that pretty much covers it. I- I'm really bad at the same self promotion thing. Like, yeah, yeah I mean, my, music, my message, my takeaway is like, there's no excuse for you to miss miss out because the <laughs> amount of platforms these things are on. We're everywhere. We're, we're like syphilis. No, we're not. That's a really bad thing to say. <laughs> we're not like syphilis. No one wants syphilis, but everyone wants me. That's that's the quote. It's a memory from the no one needs. Yeah. No, that's a memory no one wants. Um, I think I think it would be fitting really for me to to finish up on my final beer, wouldn't it? Um, being as this is oh, this the last one, the nail in the coffin. So this is um this is a brew dog. I know we talked about brew dog very early on. Um, this is called a layer cake, and this is a marshmallow and chocolate stout. Uh, runs in at seven percent. I've never had this before. Um, the, the the strap line for this is "Have your cake and drink it," which I'm a bit about. Nice. Um, Brew dog. Everyone, I'm sure, is familiar with this. is a 440 mil can, which is neither a pint nor half a pint. Um, I think that's probably what a 16 ounce, um, roughly. Um, but Sounds I mean, nice. Look, see. Um, it's a tall boy. I mean, it smells incredible. Um, this is. <laughs> I feel like I could smell it when you were smelling it too. I'm like, this is going to be great. I mean, look at that. That's 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 beautiful. Oh, it yeah. pours like Coca Cola. There's going to be um, some people at this point of like, this is blasphemy of, of not cleaning that glass. But... <laughs> Fuck it. Yeah, I'm, I mean, I I do hate myself for not washing this glass out, but my kitchen is quite a walk away from my studio. Um, so if you don't like it, you're just going to have to suck it. <laughs> uh, I mean, it looks thick and oaty, and I mean, I'm getting, what I was going to say is like, I feel like this is going to be so overpowering comparing to those other two beers. I don't think those other two beers are going to even come through. <laughs> I mean, that's a game changer. I'll be honest. <laughs> oh, yeah, wow. describe okay, what you're so what you're tasting here. Bring us in. So you get a you get this really nice kind of sweet chocolate hit. Um, it's, the mouth feels incredible. Like it's not too thick, but it, it coats the entirety of your mouth. And the finish is like it's like schmores, like like toasted marshmallow, just on the front of the tongue. Um, it, uh, there's like a l- tiny little bit of like coffee in there. Uh, okay. But it's light. It's refreshing for a, for a stout. It's refreshing. Um, okay. I don't feel like I, I need to have a run. After I finish drinking it, um, <laughs> and I, I literally I cannot see through it, which is a hallmark. Oh, yeah, that's, that's, stuff. that's straight darkness um, right there. I mean, if if you're able to get that in the states, I doubt you are. Um, but if you can order it off off the Brewdog website, I would highly recommend it. And that is the first time I've recommended a Brewdog beer since Elvis Juice. You ever tried Elvis Juice? Uh, I have. No, but it's funny you mentioned that. That is the first one I've seen down here in Austin, so I have to pick it up. It's a grapefruit IPA. Uh, runs at. You said earlier, Todd, that the percentage wasn't printed on the cap. For this one, no. I uh, I don't know if I'm just uh, blind. Is, to that, it, is that but, not like uh, a? Is that like a legal requirement in the states? You don't have to put the percentage. So that's that's the thing. Uh, I've reviewed a couple of beers in the past, and they don't have it on there. I'm like, are is that? Are you able to do that? Like, I'm pretty sure I don't you think you to, technically like... are. Yeah, because we mentioned there's like some really artsy can art, um, especially uh, some certain scenes in different states. But I, I do wonder about that if it's because mm-hmm. I'll take another look. I really don't. I mean, in the UK, the like, it's, it's loud and proud. It's like, look, this beer gets you drunk. Um, <laughs> I mean, yeah, actually, I mean, to be fair, I mean. Here. On the topic of can art and the fact that I'm into branding, and we've talked quite heavily about um, about branding throughout the, the the show. I mean, this as as a lineup. I mean, that's it's it's strong. It's it's just it, it's strong. Oh, yeah. There's, Very the can art the, on, yeah. on on beers is is, is really good these days. Um, Brew dog especially. I mean, that's. I mean, I want that guy's job. Let me let me design a beer can. <laughs> Maybe that'd that's your next gig is uh, doing some some can art. With the graphic design. Oh, that'd be cool. I'm, I'm well. I'm currently doing a logo for a. Um, funnily enough, for the film industry, uh, it's a a, nice. a a catering business for film. Interesting. Oh, the craft um, services, homies. Yeah. So um, it's a, it's actually a friend of mine who's developing an app. Um, he works in apps anyway, and and, and I'm not going to disclose too much because he'll probably slap me with NDA. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm designing a logo for that, and that's like that's way outside of what I usually do. I'm usually like, yeah, t-shirts and bands, yeah. Uh, but yeah, 
So. When, when you guys making a beer, you can design the label. <laughs> that's oh, a big man, thing I, now, man. That's a big I thing I would now. love to make a beer. Like, in fact, so I, I, I know you guys, you, you guys are the most thorough of anyone I've spoken to. You've definitely done your research because you dug through all the other podcasts and all the other bits and pieces I've done. So I don't know if you noticed, um, I did one, that the same one I did about um, uh, branding and music, business and music. Um, I also then went on to talk about... Um, the ways in which you can uniquely re- release music it was in the follow-up after so you may not have caught that um, and it was a, a friend of mine's band who released their ep on a bottle of hot sauce and that's so a big thing the, now too yeah yeah so the ep was called kebabtism or kebabtism um for kebab or kebab as americans call them um <laughs> and yeah i mean that was that was that was fascinating I, I would it's not a very memorous thing to do though like it's got it's to be memorable on though. It, oh, that was a tenuous link, Ari. Um, <laughs> I mean, yeah, it was bad. <laughs> okay, I, okay. I'm gonna I'm gonna counter that because I saw also that y'all had done a giveaway for one of the masks in the Empiric video. You we need were to supposed get... to be doing it. We haven't done it. Oh, yet. it didn't happen. Uh no. So uh, the idea was for it to do it through TikTok. Um, and uh, TikTok made it very difficult to, for us to log into our account. Um, so, oh, yeah, man. technological teething problems, but it, it will happen. I'm, all I'm saying, are, are you familiar with Slaughter to Prevail at all? Yep. They got they got their demon masks. Alex Terrible, he knows how to promote himself. All I'm saying, like, you could do some, like, memorous, like, fucking COVID-19 masks or something. <laughs> I mean, everyone in the UK is currently. If you're a, if you're an independent clothing brand or you're a band, everyone and their mum is making face coverings, improvised face coverings. Over here in in this country, if it's not a medical mask, it gets called an improvised face covering, um, which is just <laughs> nonsensical. Really. I mean, I mean, you're covering your face. I get it. Like it's a mask, bro. Like if you if you if you go rob a shop, you don't wear a face covering. You wear a mask. Do you know what I mean? Um, Right, but yeah, I mean, I'm yeah, I'm not, I'm not about that. I mean, every, everything we do is very considered, and and it's it, this sounds so so pretentious, but I wouldn't Love do a it. beer. Uh, I wouldn't do a beer because it's just not it's not us. Like, I mean, if we I tagged Brew Dog and they saw your excellent review, I mean, who knows what's. Down, I mean, if they want down. if they want to pay me to talk about their beer, that's fine. If they want to pay me to design <laughs> beer like beer uh, logos, like, like can design, that's fine. Um, if they want to make a beer for us, and I'll, I'll drink it, I'll drink the shit out of it. <laughs> You're like, um, I'll sign off on this. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'll sign everything. No, I won't. Um, but no, I don't think we do a beer. <laughs> I don't think we do a hot sauce. I, I mean, if someone if someone comes into the uh, the the realm of um, like going down Total Recall sort of sort of front, like plug yourself up to a thing and experience things, I'll do one of them. Okay. We'll do one of them. Okay. You can have I the mean, full memorist can... experience. Have have you seen like um, Code Orange? Are you familiar with with that band at all? I remember a band called Code Orange Kids. Same, Same band. band. They dropped they the just, kids. They dropped the kids. Yeah. Why? I I think uh, going in. I don't really. I don't remember. I, I would not say they've really matured in their sound, but they have. Even though it's not really they're any not different. As, they're not as like. <laughs> punk-esque as they were as code orange kids like they're i think you'd like them now like it's a lot of like industrial elements to the heaviness and whatnot but yeah. what you were just describing with with the memorist experience like um the video game quake has quake con mm-hmm. and like they just did a performance like in the game and yes it's very interesting that's cool. yeah they did, they did a cover like, of the nine inch nails original mm-hmm. theme that's, that's something local. y'all could maybe get get into like that seems to be like there's a lot of crossover with uh like video games i mean there's always been that crossover but it's a little bit yeah. more prominent than it has been in the past mm-hmm. so that could be kind of cool I'd, I'd love to do a vr show like i think that's cool like you put a 360 camera in the middle of a room and you put on a vr headset and you can look around and watch the oh, that's cool that's cool as hell man like i'm about that agree but yeah, I mean, that we have limitations in the UK in terms of technology and actually bandwidth. Like, we're we're for supposedly a first world country. We're 
hilariously outgunned when it comes to our internet connection. Like I'm in the countryside right now. I get like, I probably get about 18 megabyte per second down. That's, mm-hmm. that's the best I'll get. And that's, that, that's pretty poor. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> anyway. Well, UK government, if you're listening to this, bump up the bandwidth so Memorous can do this VR experience because we all yeah. need it. Yeah, give me, give me, the, give me the megabytes. <laughs> I think we can. We, I mean, we can keep talking, but we'll we'll end the recording on that. I think that's a pretty good, good note to end on. All right.